This video is brought to you by our trusted graphics partner, NVIDIA. Welcome to another Linus Tech Tips video. This video was intended to be part of our GeForce GTX Titan coverage. So here's our Titan GPU on our test bench, or well, one of our test benches, more on that in a moment. This is the fastest single GPU graphics card in the world, and it was intended to be kind of like, what's the best uh, the best platform pairing for the Titan GPU. But we went a little bit beyond that and took it to be more of a, uh, a cross-section of games from our, test from our test suite where we went, okay, well, let's actually just look at a bunch of different platforms. So we took our X79 platform here. So this is with a 3960X at four gigahertz, which is probably a little bit conservative for that one. Um, and then we ran that with 16 gigs of RAM, so four DIMMs running in quad channel. Then we took our um, FX or uh, 990 FX platform with an 8350 at 4.6 gigahertz. This one runs with just eight gigs. So these are running, so everything's running with um, all channels populated with one DIM. Okay, so this one's running with eight gigs in dual channel. Then we grabbed a 3770K with eight gigs of memory, okay? And that one's clocked at 4.4 gigahertz. We're going for overclocks here. Remember, all of our stuff's overclocked. The Titan's overclocked, everything's overclocked. We're going for overclocks that we believe are gonna be attainable for 95 to 98% of the people who own this hardware. So you guys have a realistic idea of what you can expect. So this one's at 4.4 gigahertz. Then we grabbed an older platform just to represent anyone running a Bloomfield or Linfield CPU. So this is an 875K, and we ran that one with eight gigs of RAM at, what was it, 3.8 or something like that? I don't, I don't remember what we ran it at, but it's on our graphs, so don't worry too much about it. So we took four different platforms and ran our entire game test suite with the Titan. Now we are planning to rerun um, a slightly different test, 3570K versus 8350, and just those two CPUs with a more realistic GPU like a 660 Ti, and then, uh, but that'll be a separate video. So this is more like, we were doing this work anyway for the Titan launch, so we figured, let's take a bunch of platforms, let's see which one game's the best. This is running 1080p for all the different games, and here is our first game. So um, actually, we don't have to stare at the screen because we can overlay these graphs, but the 3960X takes the top of the charts in Crisis 3, and this makes sense. Now, what we've heard is that the 8350 actually beats the 3570K, but we haven't tested that yet because Crisis 3 seems to really benefit from multi-cores, and we do see that. In spite of the fact that the 3960X has lower instructions per clock than a 3770K, in spite of the fact that it's actually clocked 10% lower, it performs equally. And we can only attribute that to the fact that it has two more physical cores and two more virtual cores. The 875K also performs quite well in this game, keeping up with the 8350, and we can attribute that to the fact that it has hyper-threading. So the 3770K beats out the 8350, but that might only be because of hyper-threading, and I'm really excited to check out the 3570, which is quad-core, no hyper-threading, against AMD's eight-core FX flagship. Moving along to Far Cry 3, Far Cry 3 seems to really benefit from single-threaded performance. So the 3770K at 4.4 gigahertz cleans up here, beating out the 3960X, the 8350, and the significantly older now 875K, which is starting to really show its age in terms of gaming performance in this particular game. Now our Skyrim is running with 18 different mods from the Steam Workshop, so it's not really a stock Skyrim, so you're gonna see more separation than you would if you were running at stock. This one seems to benefit from mostly just having, well, uh, high clock speeds and doesn't get much of a benefit at all from the eight cores of the 8350, which you can see performs about the same as a much older quad core 875K. So this one is not optimized for multiple cores. You need higher instructions per clock, and that's what we get on the 3770K and 3960X. Battlefield 3 at the Ultra Presets. Now, Battlefield 3 is regarded as one of those games that does benefit from multi-threading, but it doesn't seem to favor the AMD platform. So all of our hyper-threading enabled processors, as well as our faster hyper-threading enabled processors, so our 3770K and our 3960X, uh, perform significantly better in Battlefield 3 than the 8350. However, it should be noted that the scale on this graph is a little bit funny. So uh, I'll have to let Slick know before he makes graphs like this next time that this should start at zero. So the difference in performance between these processors isn't actually as dramatic as it looks. It's, it's, 
Okay. He says he fixed it before, but apparently... No, I'll, oh, I will oh, fix that. He'll fix it before. we. Uh, you can download all these graphs from the link in the video description, and he'll fix it before uploading it. So you guys will see the correct version in the, uh, in the, in the download there. Metro 2033, the 3960X. This is kind of bizarre. It just tanks in this one, and we're not really sure why that happened, but this game didn't like this platform that much. The 3770K cleans up. The 8350 shows its, shows its strength, so Metro 33 does seem to benefit from the additional cores, but then it doesn't benefit from the additional cores, so it might just be an AMD architectural thing that this game likes, but... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all we have to say about that. And then Witcher 2 has everything performing actually pretty closely. So AMD brings up the rear, but even that's only about 10% slower than the flagship 3960X from Intel and the 3770K, which is the fastest Ivy Bridge processor right now. And that's pretty much the end of the slideshow. So hopefully this has been somewhat enlightening and you guys uh, can sort of see why we actually sort of ran it. Hopefully it was interesting. Thanks for checking out this video on Linus Tech Tips. For more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos, make sure that you are subscribed.